How's it going guys, you're the first for fitness YouTube channel and today I'm going to be starting a little series just breaking down macronutrients and day one I'm going to be starting with protein intake. Now starting off, if you're watching this video we really don't know a lot about protein, it's going to be mainly directed towards strength or uh, bodybuilders, something like that, it's their, their protein needs are going to be increased so these these guidelines aren't going to be for like the typical person who's who's not working out or something like that because they're going to need you know obviously a lower amount of protein just because you know strength training and and different athletic events can increase your your need for protein you know some studies will say that it, it doesn't at all you know some people you know some educated people will say that there's no really need there's no need for an increase in, in protein but I'll, I'll post some literature some research um down this description box below and I'll even you know mention a few studies in this in this video so just to get it um a, a right into it you know the the probably the best study that I've found uh, relating to you know increased protein intake for athletes is by Wolf and I can't can't remember the last name I think it was done in 2004 again I'll post it down in the link below and some of this the, the summaries of it they said that they're they're um recommendation for protein intake for you know endurance or for strength athletes or looking to pe people looking to build muscle is about 1.4 grams per pound of body weight uh, that's pretty much what my guidelines are going to be mine are pretty much 1.25 I know Lyle McDonald's is 1.5 so it's not exactly a set number and I'll get into that in a minute but that's it's going to be kind of be in that range and the, their reasoning for that is pretty much the same as my reasoning I would believe is that you're not really going to see any hindering effects from over consuming protein you know a lot of people will say it's you know bad your kidneys or whatever that's just there's no research to support that so they're thinking of it it's a little there may be some benefits to you know consuming that over one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you know without going super high like two grams or plus there's really not going to be any hindering effects so it's kind of the better safe than sorry effect and so to get into some some protein quality questions that I get a lot uh, just the difference between an incomplete protein and a complete protein so complete proteins are going to be things from animal sources you know milk um, eggs chicken turkey beef you know etc pretty much any any milk product or any animal product and the reason for that being is that they're called complete proteins because they they include all eight essential amino acids and then you have the other the other protein sources that are kind of indirect and not extremely important because it's pretty minimal you know most of the foods that are high in protein just strictly have protein or maybe fat if it's kind of a a fatty cut but if you're talking about things like pasta they can usually have about five or six grams of protein you know per serving or oatmeal or if you get some of the different breads like I think Ezekiel bread has a four maybe like three or four grams of protein so that stuff can kind of add up and the only difference of that is just the amino acid profile is a little bit different they may be missing a few of the essential amino acids in there and I don't think that's a, a huge thing to worry about as long as majority of your protein is coming from complete sources so say for for instance if you were eating 200 grams of protein if you your goal was to eat 200 grams of protein per day and you know you got to 200 and you found out that you had 175 from complete sources and 75 for, or 25 from incomplete sources that wouldn't be a great deal so as long as you're eating a lot of complete proteins it's not going to be a, a concern but if you're someone who's not eating a lot and you see it's like 50-50 then that be might, that might be kind of a concern so you have to use some critical thinking with that and that's where the kind of insurance comes into play if you're eating you know 1.25 to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight it kind of gives you some flexibility in there uh, just to make sure that maybe if that if you hit one gram per pound of body weight with the complete proteins then if you eat the 0.25 where kind of the incomplete stuff that would be you know a safe route to go um, then I'll talk about timing real quick you know the whole whey protein is fast digor fast absorbing, digesting, etc. is kind of overblown. It's true that it is, but it's also true that it really doesn't matter. So don't fixate on, on that too much. 
you know, maybe around your workout, you should consider that, you know, I wouldn't, uh, if you're doing a, a pre-workout meal and you only have, you know, if you have to eat at 11 and your workout is at 12, I would say, you know, do a shake because it's going to be uh, faster absorb, faster digesting. It's not going to sit in your stomach as long. Um, so, you know, have like a steak before workout wouldn't be the greatest idea. And then post-workout is really not important. You know, a lot of people will say you need to get protein in immediately, but that's really not a big deal. Maybe if you're training fasted, you know, that might be a, a thing to do if you haven't eaten in like eight hours and it might be a little more important, but not a big deal to stress about in the, in the overall picture. Um, I'll talk about, the last thing I will talk about is the lean body mass and then I'll finish off talking about, you know, why it's kind of bad to overconsume protein. And so talk about lean body mass is that the protein, the protein requirements for a, a person, you know, again, for someone building muscle, a strength athlete, a strength athlete, et cetera, is going to be mainly based on the, the lean body mass, which may not be a concern to most people who are sitting, you know, around 10 to 15 percent body fat. It's not going to be a huge fluctuation from, you know, their lean body mass to their, their total weight. So the the one the one point two five the one point five kind of range will probably be safe for you. But if you're someone who's really really overweight, you know you're pushing twenty percent body fat plus. It's not really going to make sense for someone you know who's three hundred pounds who's you know obese to be eating like four hundred plus grams of protein. So you're going to have to do some critical thinking with that as well. You know the reasoning for that is that you know the, the fat cells really don't require much protein. So again, it's based off your lean body mass more, more than anything. So, so you just have to kind of use some common sense and see how lean you are. An example would be, you know, if you're super lean, 185 pounds, super lean, you know, you may need, you know, 200 grams plus of protein. And if you're 180, you know, if you're 185 pounds and you're 20% body fat, you're not going to need as much as the other person. So again, just using some common sense and some critical thinking with your own body is going to be, going to be essential. And then lastly, uh, kind of a problem with over-consuming protein for some people, and again, this is going to be on an individual basis, depending on what your goals are. If you're, you know, a super beginner and you haven't put on hardly any any weight, and you're, you know, you're eating, you think you're eating, you know, enough calories to to gain weight, and you just you don't think you don't understand why you're not gaining weight. You know, common problem that I see is that the person is usually just over-consuming protein. And what that's doing is not allowing them to get the additional calories from the carbohydrates and the fat to make them gain weight. Because at the end of the day, regardless of you know the foods that you eat or the supplements you take or anything, unless you know, they're steroids, you're not going to gain weight unless you're eating more food or intaking more calories than you're burning. So that's the number one thing when you're trying to gain weight is that period. You know, protein is going to have its role in there as long as carbohydrates and fat, but that's the main goal is to be in a calorie surplus. So when you're consuming, you know, if you take someone who's really small, 150 pounds, you know, and they're consuming, you know, 250 grams of protein, 300 grams of protein, you know, they may have to drop that back a little bit just to kind of get in that range where they can be in a calorie surplus because protein is promotes the tidy levels, you know, people feel really full when they eat a lot of chicken or, you know, whole whole food source, usually with shakes, they don't feel as full, uh, maybe depends on the person, but protein has, you know, at least anecdotally been shown to promote satiety levels. So if you're trying to gain weight, that's kind of the last thing you want. So if you're trying to gain weight, set the the protein at kind of a minimum. So instead of the 1.25 I recommend for most people if you're like a hard gainer none of the sense and you just can't seem to gain weight you know drop it back to like a gram of, of protein per pound of body weight that might work better for you and again you know but if if you're counting your calories and you're and you're fine you're hitting the 1.25 you're in a calorie surplus you're going to gain weight but for some people who don't who don't count all their calories dropping back that protein just a little bit could help you get past that surplus because you're going to be you know more hungry to eat those carbohydrates and those fats and the last point of that is overconsuming protein is just kind of uh, redundant, and I guess that's that can be a reason why it can hinder you. And then a lot of people say it can't hinder you, but that that's a reason that's a way it could hinder you if you're trying to gain weight. And another thing, just to finish off, is it just becomes an expensive way of, of producing glucose because 
once you get a certain point where your body has enough protein it needs to, you know, hair, skin, nails, muscles, whatever, whatever it does, once you have, you know, enough protein, all that extra protein isn't necessarily going to turn into fat, but it's going to turn into glucose. So you but you'd be much better off just eating more carbohydrates and setting that protein at kind of a minimum. You know, that, that might kind of contradict what I said earlier about being safe than sorry, but I'm talking more of the people who eat like two grams per pound of body weight and, you know, they're natural athletes, so their protein synthesis isn't increased. If you're eating that much, you know, there's really no need for that. You know, like I said, the, the best study that I've found is said that 1.4 is probably the the maximum, you know, Lyle McDonald says 1.5, so it's not going to be a, a huge difference there. But I would say anything, you know, in the two gram uh, per pound of body weight is isn't really doing anything for you. And again, it's just an expensive way to uh, do uh, expensive way and inefficient way to produce glucose. And again, it can if you're trying to gain weight, it can really uh, hinder you from consuming those other calories. So that's all in the, the protein video, guys. If you have any questions, just let me know below. I try not to miss anything, and I'll have future videos coming up on carbohydrates and fats.